Does Fultz deserve to be the number one pick in the draft? Yes, he does, because the Philadelphia 76ers have the number one pick. If the Boston Celtics had the number one pick, he would not deserve to be number one because he doesn't fit with Isaiah Thomas. That would not work for the Boston Celtics, not with what they're trying to do. They want bigger, more athletic individuals. Not to say that Fultz is devoid of that because he can get his own shot. He's got a nice handle, can pass, can score, can shoot, etc. But they don't believe he would work with Isaiah Thomas, who was a league MVP candidate, averaged 29 points per game last year and is looking to re-up with somewhat of a max deal if not with Boston certainly to position himself to get it from somewhere else and it's hard to do that if you got somebody else that you have to defer to in terms of giving them the basketball maybe not defer but share in the case of the Philadelphia 76ers when Ben Simmons is going to be your primary ball handler and playmaker combining that with the fact that it's 6'10 6'11 with guard like skills and a penchant to pass first rather than shoot first you got a guy in Fultz who's only 19 years is old who they believe can be a scoring machine and can help spread the floor and when you combine that with Joel Embiid in the post even though he has the ability to step out of three-point range you've got a three-headed monster in Simmons, Fultz, and Joel Embiid. It's not an accident that since they got the number one overall pick, you know, ticket sales are booming for the Philadelphia 76ers. Trust unlike, the process. Uh, unlike anything. In the, don't get me started Trust with that the nonsense. Process. Hell no, I don't. All right. But Pinky's not going to get you know, any credit, but he, he deserves does, it. He does not. Yes, but he here's does. the deal. No, no. You know what? Anybody can do You know what? I can do that job to throw seasons. Throw seasons. Give me four years. Tell me I can throw seasons and then come talk well, to me. Go ahead and do it. I'm not I'm the only one here. The point is, Fultz deserves to be the number one pick because they're saying what he's made of. I haven't seen much of him. I know he averaged 23 points a game. I know he shot 41% from three-point range, but also know that he only won eight games in his lone year at Washington. So it's not his fault, but nevertheless, he hasn't proved he can win, but he has talent, and he fits with what Philadelphia is trying to do. That makes him worthy of being number one. For most of the year, I thought it was Lonzo Ball who should have been the top overall pick. But the way Darren Fox got him in the tournament made me say, OK, wait a minute. There are athletic questions, both ends of the floor with Lonzo. And maybe the consensus around Fultz is correct. Where I disagree with you, so I say, yes, Fultz deserves to be the number one pick. Okay. Where I disagree with you is here. Um, and I'm not saying Fultz is Michael Jordan. Let me be clear. Right. But this makes the case. When Bobby Knight was asked, who should we draft? Uh, um, and I'm trying to remember the GM Michael who asked him. He said, Michael Jordan. He said, but we need a center. He said, draft Jordan, play him at center. <laughs> right? Like, whatever right. you think you need on the team, the answer is Michael Jordan. Okay. In fact, Hakeem Olajuwon, at one, who's one of the greatest players of all time. And a two-time is, champion. Is actually a draft blunder because Jordan was available in that draft. Whoever didn't pick Michael Jordan in that draft, you couldn't have known it at the time. Olajuwon's one of the greatest players ever. Picking themselves. But anyone who doesn't... He's number three overall. He, he was number three overall. Olajuwon and Sam and, Bowie. And Bowie, right. Right. The point is that Olajuwon was actually a mistake. Think about that for a second. It actually wasn't, but go ahead. If Michael Jordan's available, I don't care who else is in the draft, the answer is Michael Jordan. And what that means is take the best player. So if you think Fultz is the best player, then I don't care what you think the team needs, take Fultz. Now, if it's super close between him and Jackson or someone like that, I, that I understand. We really need a wing, and we really like this other guy, and we think it's six, one, half dozen, the other, fine. But if you evaluate everyone and you go, that guy, Fultz, is the best. And according to the workouts and most of the teams, there's a consensus he is the best. Draft him. Don't worry about what you well, need. Draft him. pick Markel Fultz expected to miss three to six weeks as he undergoes physical therapy on that shoulder. Uh, sources telling our Adrian Wojnarowski, who you just heard from. Stephen A., how does the process look now? Awful. Um, and I don't say awful in terms of Joel Embiid and, and uh, Ben Simmons, because obviously it looks very, very legitimate in that regard. Um, it's awful, but uh, let's be very, very clear. Sam, you know, uh, Sam Hinkie, uh, the former general manager for the Philadelphia 76ers, uh, who was dismissed from that role and replaced by Brian Colangelo, looks good here because it's not his fault that it's this bad right now. I think a legitimate argument could be made that in all likelihood he would not have drafted Markel Fultz, uh, that he's somebody that would have grabbed a Jason Tatum or De'Aaron Fox or, 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 or probably not a Markinen or a Dennis Smith or a Donovan Mitchell because they came a little bit later on in the draft. But those are just the players that in the same draft class as Markel Fultz who went after him, including Lonzo Ball and 
right now it appears to be the biggest bust in NBA history. I don't recall, even with Kwame Brown, Michael Lola Candy, and others, I don't recall a number one overall pick in the NBA draft being this bad. I think the only thing this glaring, this conspicuous, Max, might have been Sam Bowie being taken. Now, ahead I got of one for Jordan you. You're forgetting in one. 19, in 19. Yeah, Anthony I probably Bennett. am forgetting one, but Anthony I will say Bennett. this. Anthony, yeah, 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 yeah. But even Anthony Bennett, well, we just discovered that, that that he couldn't play, but at least he had a season or two to prove that he couldn't play. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this guy, Markel Fultz, has been very, very bad. Now, uh, watching Kevin McHale and Isaiah Thomas yesterday, and I'd advise everybody, I, I mean, I don't get to watch uh, it much, but any chance you get to watch Isaiah Thomas and Kevin McHale, two Hall of Famers on NBA TV, I would suggest people strongly do it because they're absolutely sensational together. And and Kevin McHale came up with the line of the night when he was talking about, you know, playing bad basketball syndrome or something along, like, along that line that, that, you know, he's paraphrasing. But I would tell you that, you know, none of us are in a position to speak uh, intuitively or or intimately about what's messing with Markel Fultz psychologically, but I can assure you this is not just about his shoulders. Uh, and, and, and Raymond Brothers, a, a fabulous agent with a great reputation, uh, you know, he, he speaks and, and he's supporting his client and he's getting them away from the Philadelphia 76ers. But it was, it was obviously in the Philadelphia 76ers' greatest interest to do everything that they could to get Markel Fultz healthy. This is, I'm not saying that he doesn't have a shoulder injury. Please don't get me wrong. I am telling you it is not just about that. This man has some personal demons uh, that are none of our business, uh, that most of us don't know about intimately and probably never will, nor should we. But I will tell you it is not just about his shoulder. This young brother's got some issues. He's got some problems. And I sincerely hope and pray that he will overcome it because it is not just his shoulder. He forgot how to play basketball for crying out loud. He just forget just forget his shot. Me talking several okay. weeks ago about when this, even last year, when this topic first came up about the difference between potential energy and kinetic energy. Maybe you remember from science class. The process was going along just fine. It wasn't perfect, but sometimes the perfect is the enemy of the good. But it was going along and they were gathering talent. And the whole point of Sam Hinkie's process was that if you tank, not for a year and try to grab a player, but for like five years, the chances are you're going to come along and grab one or two generational kind of talents. And you will be able to build a sustainable, perhaps dynastic, but certainly powerhouse team going forward. Now, for those mm -hmm. who would say, fine, Hinky, so, so this is potential energy. You roll a boulder up a hill. See, I, I even made a little diagram. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little stick figure and there's the boulder going up the hill. Once you get it to the top of the hill... That's potential energy you've put in the work. Even if you don't believe that Sam Hinkie was the guy to then, wait, which way am I going? It's backwards for me. To again, push, the, push it down and let it roll all the way down to realize the potential energy. That's called kinetic energy. Even if you don't believe he was the guy to do it, he wouldn't know when to pull the trigger, what deals to make, fine. Then you replace him with someone who would. What did I say when they hired Brian Colangelo? Eh, mistake. Not good, not smart enough, not good enough, period. And what happened? All that potential energy that Sam Hinkie built up was ruined by a bad GM. That is what happened to the process. The process itself, the concept of it was fine. Stink for half a decade to be great for a decade. The problem is the execution was bad because they put the wrong guy in charge and he passed up on Tatum, added a pick, a first-round pick, in order to not take Tatum and take mm -hmm. Fultz. Stephen A., anything else that's going on Molly. with Fultz, they should have so done I, their due diligence.